She has danced and choreographed her way around the world, reaching and touching the lives of millions with her bold and unique style. She is Margot Sappington, a native Texan, driven and energetic, and one of the most influential women in performing arts today. Welcome, Margot. Thank you so I'm much for having so me. I'm so happy to have you here. Now, you started dancing at such an early age. How old were you? I was five, and actually I started dancing because of a physical problem. Uh, my, I was pigeon-toed, and the, the choice was braces on my legs or dancing, and my mother decided to put me in ballet. Ballet was a good choice for you. When, when did you make it to the Joffrey Ballet? I went to the Joffrey on his invitation. He, I met him when I was 14 because in those, as it still happens today, they're guest teachers who come to various conventions. He met me when I was 14 and he watched me develop and invited me when I was 17 just as I was graduating high school to come and join his company in New York. Wow, and for how long did you dance? I danced, you uh, well, I danced on, in his company on Broadway until the, in the, into the 70s. And then uh, but uh, started you consider, choreographing. You consider O Calcutta your break. Tell o me Calcutta, about that. O Calcutta was my first professional choreography. Uh, it was uh, um, a it was an off Broadway show at the time. It later moved to Broadway and played until 1989, actually in New York. Uh, it was uh, something unique, and uh, it gave me my entree into the choreographic world. It was a, a break that you know helped me helped me go on. How old were you when you first choreographed I was it? 21. 21 years 21. old? 21. <laughs> yes, I was 21. That's amazing. So it's obviously a show that's special to your heart for because it ran for it so is. long. It is. And it, and it was uh, it was something that it, through the years sometimes uh, would give me great distress because I was called Margot O. Calcutta Sappington. Oh no. <laughs> and the first time someone said, didn't you choreograph that fabulous production of Jaconda? I thought, oh my God, thank God it's over. You know, I'm no longer Margot Calcutta Sappington. I have moved on. <laughs> but such a good break for you. You know, we were talking earlier about the world of dance and dance training and how important it is, what gifts it can give a young woman. Oh, I think it's Talk so important. Talk to me about it. It's so important, and I try to encourage parents, too, of, of young girls who come to me and say, well, do you think she'll have a career? And I said, it doesn't matter. Uh, the thing that's important is the discipline that you learn, the focus that you learn, the physical grace that you learn, the ethic of exercise, which is so important, mm -hmm. that you can take with you for the rest of your life. And you have to think. People think dancing in ballet is only physical. You have to think. You have to remember steps. You have to uh, remember corrections. You have to apply the corrections. So many, many ballet dancers, when they finish their careers, usually in their early 30s, will go into college. They become lawyers, they become doctors, they become business people, they open dancewear shops, you know, they go on because they're driven people with discipline in their life. And it's so important. Uh, they also become our audience, you know. Of course. They, they, if they've had any dancing at all and they go and they see a beautiful ballet or show or... You've been choreographing now for so many years. Do you still dance? I dance in rehearsal. You do? I dance in rehearsal and I dance in my, my business partner, Valentina Kozlova, uh, has a school. And uh, she, I do her Nutcracker, and I, I am Aunt Drosselmeyer. Oh. I think this coming Christmas I'll be Countess Drosselmeyer. I think I've graduated to Countess now. <laughs> and it's so much fun, and they, everyone says, well, you're having much more fun than the kids are. <laughs> when people talk about dance as being something for the young, I bet you can argue with them because you've oh, had yes. a lifetime in the dance industry, the dance arts. Um, you disagree with that statement, right? Yes. It's for, it's for, Margot Fontaine retired from dancing at 60. You know, she was uh, she was a fat, was a great English ballerina, yeah. and danced into her 60s. If you have, if you have, if you take care of yourself, and you are smart, you can continue. You know, well into your well into your 40s and 50s. Hey, I saw Barishnikov well into Barishnikov, his whatever, and Barishnikov boy, he looks great now too. <laughs> he looks great. He's great. Now, there's something new that you've done that's a little bit of a merge of comedy and ballet with William Shatner. Yes. Tell me about this. Yes. Um, I fell in love with his CD, Has Been, when it came out in 2004, and I played it constantly, and I kept thinking, this would make such a great ballet. It's so different. How did you connect it with ballet? Word. Well, the spoken word, and well, I've done quite a lot of, of, of ballets to popular music. I did uh, Billboards at the Joffrey with music by Prince, uh, Shed Your Skin, which was in Atlanta Ballet, with Indigo Girls, and they were performing live on stage. So I have an ear for that, and I uh, penchant for using popular music in my ballets. Uh, I love this CD, and Ben, ben Foles did the music, so it's very melodic, mm -hmm. there's lots of music, unlike some of his previous CDs, which are really just spoken word, right. 
and he, it's, a, it's autobiographical, and so it, it was funny, it was touching, there were all kinds of gamuts of feelings that you could play with to make a piece. And you created a ballet called? Common People. Common, Common with People. With the Milwaukee Ballet with Company? With the Milwaukee Ballet, and I called, uh, I got his number from a friend in L.A. who knew his agent, and so on and so forth. He called me and he said, so what's this? And I said, well, I want to do a ballet. And he said, oh my God. And he said to me, uh, which is very, very funny, he said, finally, after we chatted for a while, he said, now, is there any money in it? And I said, oh, Bill, it's ballet. We rely right. on the kindness of strangers. <laughs> he said, I get it. I understand. So he got so enthusiastic about it and came to see the ballet. And it is, now it's going to be a TV special. That's amazing. That's coming out later this year. Has it toured? No, but Milwaukee is reviving it. The, the company will be doing it in March of 2009. So it goes so from everybody stage, go to Milwaukee. You come and to Milwaukee. And then we'll get to see it on the TV yes. special if yes. we can't travel to and Milwaukee. And you come to Milwaukee and see it live. Have a taste of winter in March. Come and to it's, Milwaukee. It's funny, isn't it's it? It's funny. It's funny. They're dancing. It's yes. beautiful dancing. And yes. it's elegant. And but it's, it's funny. It's, it's classically based. Mm -hmm. It's ballet on point uh, with a twist. It's wonderful merging of uh, traditional art and more contemporary art in many ways. Yes. Margo, before we go. What are the things that still inspire you today? Uh, what inspires me today is, is life and the feeling of going forward every day, doing something new every day, touching someone every day. And that's what I think in my career that, that I've been most blessed, is that uh, people come back to me after seeing my pieces and say, I was touched by this, or I cried, or I laughed. That's so important, to, take, to transport someone to that place. It's a good message for the women watching out there today. No matter how busy our juggling act is, yes, to stop take time for yourself mm -hmm. and do what you do what you dream of. That's great, Margot Sappington. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Wendy.